Hi, I'm Shane with eCharter.com. Today I'm going to walk you through how to install Roadmaster's rear anti sway bar on our 2017 Ford E450 cutaway motorhome. Upgrading your rear sway bar is going to enhance your driving ability, it's going to make your ride a lot more comfortable. With our factory one on, what happens is our motorhomes are sit so high. When you're passing a track trailer, you get a crosswind. What happens is the top of the trailer or top of the motorhome wants to lean like this. The higher we go or the thicker we go with our sway bar, it's, sway bar, it's going to reduce the amount of movement the top of our RV gets. It's going to make the steering a lot better for us, again, because we're not going to be fighting it to try and keep it on the road. One thing I do want to show you is the difference in the new sway bar to the old one. You can see the difference in how thick the new one is compared to the old one. This is really going to help reduce a lot of that sway and body roll you get. Our factory bar is only going to be about an inch and an eighth thick, where our new one is going to be an inch and a half. It's going to be a solid steel, chrome molly, black powder coat finish, really going to help reduce the risk of rust and corrosion. Our bushings are going to be a little bit different than our factory ones also. Our factory ones are going to be more of a rubberized, where these are going to be polyurethane. The difference is, is, is rubber bushings tend to break down. Uh, you get the rolled salts and everything on them, they break down. With our polyurethane bushings, you have a lot less risk of your polyurethane bushings breaking down over time. Our end links are also going to have the same polyurethane bushings. For this particular motorhome, um, we do need 11 inch end links. And you can find those here at eTrailer along with your sway bar kit. And the reason they need to be 11 inches is so that our sway bar is sitting level with the ground. Our end links are going straight up, horizontal from the bar, and you notice our attachment point has to be above our leaf spring when we drill our hole. As I mentioned, we are going to have to drill a hole for our end link because these do not line up with the holes for our factory end links. So you just want to make sure you take your time when drawing the holes. You're going to have one hole you have to drill in each side for the top of your end link. This kit is going to come with all the necessary hardware to get it installed, including new bushing clamps. That being said, they are going to mount directly in the factory holes already on your axle, or factory brackets, I should say. Now that we've gone over some of the features, let's walk you through how to get it installed. To start our installation, we need to remove our old sway bar. We're going to start with our end links where our sway bar connects into them. We're going to take a 916 socket and we're going to remove the nut that's on the bottom. We'll have one on each side of the vehicle. We're going to take our sway bar. I'm going to shift it down like that. We're going to have two brackets here. And on the other side, we need to remove both of those. We use a half inch socket to remove the two bolts that are holding these brackets in place. Be careful here because the sway bar can be a little bit heavy. What I'm going to do is loosen them like this where we can get them off with fingers. I'll get a second set of hands to help me pull it off the rest. Now we'll take our new sway bar, um, get it ready. We're going to need our bushings that we're going to be putting on. We're going to have one for each side. You're going to a little bit of grease or lubricant for the inside of your bushings. And you're also going to have Loctite. Your hardware that you took off, the lower brackets, we're going to be reinstalling that. We're going to put a little bit of Loctite on and we're going to put the smaller uh, washer on each one of the bolts. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take our bushing, our poly bushing, and it's going to split like this. Take our grease and we want to spread it along the inside of it and get you a good coating on there. And I'm going to take it like this and we're going to match how it is on our other one. We're going to slide it right over the bar and then our bracket will slide right over the top. We'll do that same thing on the other side of the bar. Take each one of our bolts and put red Loctite on because what happens as you thread this up into the bracket that Loctite is going to spin 
uh, get, it's going to be coated all the way around the bolt itself. As I mentioned, get an extra set of hands, use the same hardware that you removed to begin with uh, to put our sway bar back up into place. If you come up here, one thing you're going to notice is that where our end links met our original one, they're in a different location. So what we're going to have to do is now we're going to put on our new end links, mark on the frame rail, and then we're going to have to drill a hole for our new hardware. And we'll take our 5 8 socket. We're going to remove our factory end links. Now with our sway bar sitting level with the ground, we put on our end link. Now what we need to do is make sure that our end link's vertical. And we're going to mark the inside of it right on the frame rail, and we got to drill a hole. And you want to make sure you check the inside of the frame rail before you drill all the way through. Make sure there's no wiring or anything like that you may have to move. Now before you tighten your end link onto your bar, you want to make sure that the bolt head is on the outside. Then you go flat washer on the inside, bolt through the bar, flat washer, and then nut. Once you have your hole drilled, you're going to use that same combination, same exact way, going through the frame rail. On your driver's side inside frame rail, you're going to have a couple of hard lines. I would suggest popping these little plastic uh, holders off. Flatten them two down against the bottom of the frame rail when you drill your hole. That way you don't make contact with them and cause any damage. We're going to come back and torque our hardware. We're going to torque these first, and then we'll move up to these. We're going to torque them all to the specifications and the instructions. Once you get all your hardware tightened and torqued to the specifications and the instructions, you're ready to hit the road. I'm Shane with eTorer.com. That's going to do it for a look at and installation on Roadmaster's rear anti-sway bar on our 2017 Ford E450 cutaway.